Hello race fans and welcome back to MoneySport.com. This is the website for the fans and by the fans. Wake up, it's 8 a.m. on June 1st. First thing you need to do is tear that page off your calendar and circle June 9th. It's coming real soon and the excitement is starting to build for the coveted third jewel in the Triple Crown. So we're here today at Santa Anita Racetrack, Clockers Corner, looking for who's who in the world of racing and we're going to see who's available to talk to. But we actually are going to bring you an interview with prominent trainer Richard Baltus in a few minutes. So. Um, and we ran her on dirt like three times. I think she broke her maiden on the dirt. She was running against some very good horses as a two-year-old. And then um, the, the thing about the turf was always in the back of our mind, you know, because she's mm. she looks like a grass filly. She's out of a stormy Atlantic mare by Blaine. Uh, so. When we put her on the grass, she won. And then we ran her, and I think we ran her down the hill. She ran second. Caught from she got caught the at the wire. Yeah, we, yeah, we thought we were going to get a lone F, and it didn't really happen. But, uh, you know, so after that, I told Steve, the owner, I said, well, let's just give her a little break because she's, you know, she's been in the barn since she was two. She's never really had a break. So nothing was really wrong with her at all. But, and we're going to try to get her ready for our opening day, opening week at Del Mar. Excellent. Okay. And then we ended up settling in Huntington Beach, you know, since the fourth grade. So um, you're pretty much homegrown. Yeah, pretty much I'm in California, you know, but I still have roots in Indiana. But, uh, yeah, I used to go to the races. My dad would go on the weekends. Every weekend he'd go to the track. We just yeah. loved playing the horses. And, um, you yeah, know, we used to come out here to Santa Anita. And, you know, um, I also remember coming out here and, and just, I would always look at the trainers in the paddock and the horses, you know, that was kind of like, because I really wasn't gambling because I wasn't old enough, obviously, I was 13 years old, and um, I always had a fondness to, for the trainers, you know, I thought, that, that's a pretty good job. Yeah. Well, I used to go, yeah, the horses kept calling me, and, and I, you know, I, I think it was Charlie Whittingham was probably the biggest influence I had, just watching him saddle. He used to saddle three horses in this big cap, three horses. I don't know, I just always mm. thought it was an intriguing game, and um, so, um, I used to come out to the track and a couple times in the morning look for a job, but it just wasn't happening, I didn't have any experience. Yeah. So in 1983, I went to the Kentucky Derby with my sister at Horse Park. It's called the, it was called the Kentucky Equine Institute. Where basically what they wanted to do was teach people about horses so they could be qualified to work on the farms. Farm. So I was, I was working at a, at a farm called Pillar Stud, and I saw a, mare, a stallion breed of mare, and I was like cutting grass, and you know, you drive through into the, to the barns and uh, it's just like, oh, it was unbelievable. You know? I was like just awestruck, you know, I thought, wow, these are the greatest horses in the world. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, my heart's in California and I'm not a cold weather person. <laughs> so I moved back home here and then I got a job with, I think, Gerald Vienna as a group. I, got my trainer's, I took my trainer's license test. I got my trainer's license in 91. You know, this is six years later. Okay, so I had already had six or seven years in the business, mucking stalls, doing whatever. And then I saddled my first horse, and the horse won. Wow. First start. First, first start won. Wow. So then yeah. I became assistant trainer. I wrote a res I had a resume made up. I went and talked to Richard Mandela and uh, gave me a job. But I had to start as a groom. I struggled a lot. And this is not an easy business. So I, I was I trained horses two or three times. You know, but I oh, wow. I was like in my forties and I, I thought, you know what? I'm not making any money. It's super hard. <laughs> no, I, I mean anybody that has any success in this business, I can tell you they deserve it. I think they're really yeah, I think I think the guys that are really good trainers are the guys that have worked from the bottom up, you know. Bob Baffert. Bob Baffert started as, you know, in the quarter horse business, you know, so, um, and I think before that he was in the business, you know, I don't know what his total background is, but nothing is given here. Everything has to be earned. I think I had a passion, and then now that I look back on my life, they, they're very happy that I made it, and uh, so am I, you know, but I'll tell you, it's been a long haul, and, you know, every day there's something that goes wrong with the horses. So, 
you're just constantly putting out fires and you know when you gear up for a big weekend like last weekend we had two grade one horses running and one lost by a half a nose and the other one lost by a neck you know it was the photo i thought we wanted but we didn't and uh you know those kind of things you, you just you just take it in stride you got to be very proud of your work and proud of your staff and proud of your horse and uh, you know, it's not all glory um i think there is i mean i don't i'm not really a gambler <laughs> i think justify will win it i i think he's a special special horse um, obviously when he won the kentucky derby and not not being raced as a two-year-old i think the record was 144 years old uh, so, right there is one thing. He's done. The horse has done that. He's undefeated. Um, I've seen him train, and I've been hit Santa Anita here for a while. And I think there's been a couple horses that I've watched gallop over this track that I think were the best horses I've ever seen. One was